John Greggy, welcome to E-Town. Um, good to hear you. Good to have you here. Um, we've been around each other some, but this is the first time you've done the radio show. So, so, yeah. so good. Welcome. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was the a show in North Carolina where both you and I were sitting in with Jack Johnson at some shed outdoor arena kind of place. Yeah, yeah. We saw each other backstage. That was cool. That was kind of mysterious and cool. Yeah. <laughs> There was an inebriated former presidential candidate backstage wandering around, as I remember. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Stories. These are stories, right? Um, your new record is called Pagan Church. Let's talk about our shared values. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I go first. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have a lot of shared values with you, I'm sure. <laughs> but what is, um, you know, I, I have to believe that just listening to the songs on the record, um, you know, you cover a lot of territory and um, a lot of emotional ground. But, but yeah, you talk about some things, for example, that um, used to be taboo and really aren't taboo anymore. We're, we're sort of changing our definition of what's acceptable. Um, yeah. And... What, what did you have in mind when you, when you came up with the title for the record? Well, the, the title comes from a song that uh, I think is more about nature. And um, I, I was raised Catholic, but by a Sicilian mother. So it's a very complicated type of Catholicism because she's Sicilian, so she's very... Uh, uh, like, she doesn't like to um, share anything. She's very private and very secretive, like Godfather stuff, so... She would be like, you're Catholic, but not want to talk about it. And then, you know, someone, some super Christian would be like, praise Jesus. She'd be like, okay, keep it to yourself. <laughs> no one needs to hear that. <clears throat> and it was, uh, so it was interesting. And, and uh, my father was not Catholic. He was just do it to hang out with my mom, you know, whatever she says. You know. uh, so, so that's not really giving you a lot of guidance as a young person, yeah. right? Spiritual he was, guy. He was very analytical, so it was an interesting combination. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, it was always this mixture of pagan influences from the music I listened to. I lived in Santa Cruz right after my uh, childhood, and so there was a lot of that mixed with some of the good aspects of, I guess, any kind of religion of like be nice and share and right. all that stuff. Golden so, rule kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, you went to college in Santa Cruz, right? Yeah. What is it? The banana, banana slug. That is what it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> the strangest motto or strangest uh, mascot, I guess, but maybe not. I appreciated it, that. I've always. It, it's not fierce or <laughs> or worrisome, in it's, a typical sort of like. Yeah. What it is is it's irreverent, and I think that's. I, I really. I've always loved irreverence. And yeah. I think. Santa Cruz, I guess it, at the time and probably still is and wasn't like a sports school. So that was right. their way of kind of uh, just like making fun of the whole mascot yeah. thing, I think. The yeah. fighting banana slug, I believe, is what it was yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sounds slippery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, it is important to be um, uh, open-minded and, and in some ways sort of uh, reverential when we're connected with amazing natural beauty and to yeah. recognize that that's a powerful uh, resource that needs to be visited from time to time and appreciated. So, yeah, I, I get that, big church. Um, were a lot of these songs written during your sort of lockdown during a pandemic? Yeah, they were kind of written as we were coming out. The first song that I wrote uh, ended up not being on the album called Laura Rolled Me a J, which was... At, thank you, if you know that song. Thank you. And that was written right around when things started to open back up and, and kind of uh, the sort of chaos that was the half in, half out kind of yeah. thing. And I had put out a record called Mermaid Salt in, in, um, that I had written a lot of stuff in, in sort of during the lockdown. And this was kind of all the songs that were, were about to go out and, and uh, yeah. see how the world can handle it and everything. You know, you're fortunate uh, more so than a lot of people during the lockdown in that you've got a cool community of a lot of people, singer-songwriters, I'm thinking of people like, you know, Steve Poltz or, um, yeah. you know, um, uh, Donovan Frankenrider or uh, um, Langhorn Slim and, pe you know, people like that who were your pals who were similarly uh, isolated, 
yeah. but also technologically savvy enough to be able to share, hey, I've been working on this thing, or let's have a Zoom call, or hey, would you add a part? Can you sing harmony on this song? During lockdown, you had that advantage, right, of being able to still be in communication with your, your people. Definitely. And that's the record was recorded with a band called TK and the Holy Know Nothings, which is a wonderful Portland band. And they were around. And uh, yeah, we started, I remember we, they had these gigs where, you know, like maybe 10 people could come and, uh, and you could only play for a certain amount of time. And so yeah. they were doing like seven nights at this venue because they could only could have 10 people at a time. And, and, <laughs> They were all in the balcony. Yeah, they were. And they were I think <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good callback. <laughs> but they run out of songs, so they said, "Craig, you come down here and um, let us back you up on a few." And that's yeah. I taught I taught them the Lori rolled me a J song, and then uh, that went well. And I said, "I got like ten others of these if you want to make a record." And they said, nice. "Sure." <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I do want to ask you about something. You. Um, I don't know whether it's your uh, stoic Catholic upbringing, mm -hmm. uh, nonverbal. Yeah. or your um, just, just values that you've accumulated as a traveling musician, but um, you do a thing that is um, designed to sort of help alleviate food insecurity. Oh, yeah. Warm Nights, is that what it's called? Oh, we do a Keep It Warm tour Keep every, it warm, yeah, yeah. every November. Keep It Warm every November. You go out and raise some money for, for what? For homeless Usually shelters? Usually food banks. Food and, banks, and, yeah. Yeah, and that was uh, my manager, Phil, who's here tonight. He had, it was his sort of idea to kind of... We were inspired by working with Jack, actually. Yeah. I had never done anything for charity because I didn't have any money extra at the end, right. you know? <laughs> and uh, I, I learned you have to... Um, have some money before you do charity stuff. Because you never want to be jealous of the charity that you're raising money for. I had a couple of those in my early days. Yeah. Can I keep some of the money we just raised? Yeah. Or, yeah. So one time I did a, I was, I had nothing. I used to live in my Astro van and, and I got hired to play a benefit at a school in Marin County, you know, and I was walking around. I was like, these kids are doing all right. <laughs> I said, what is this for? She said, oh, they, we're raising money to get them new iPads. The iPads are too old. And I was like, oh, could I have one of the old iPads? <laughs> I slept in my van last night. I could yeah. use, <laughs> use an old iPad. <laughs> anyway, so, but yeah, but keep it warm. Yeah, we do food banks. <laughs> it's important to feed people. Yeah. No, I think it's... Um... I think it's one of the beautiful things about being a touring musician. And I was sort of touching on this earlier is that whether you're sleeping in your van or not, you're traveling around, you get to see so many different places, different towns, different communities, um, you know, whether it's a, a, a county fair or a fundraiser for new iPads in Marin County or, or uh, you know, something in the deep south or other places. Uh, most, most people in this country, at least, don't travel that much. Yeah. They don't get to see other, other cultures, other states, hear other accents. And um, you do, you get to, and you get to tell some stories. And people are very kind to musicians and to travelers. I learned that yeah. when I, I was living in Santa Cruz and I had nothing and I was playing around and you know, no one was offering to let me sleep on their couch. But once I started traveling, it was the kindness. I think every musician, it's probably age old, you know, from the beginning of the dawn of society, yeah. people treat artists well and I would just go and I wasn't that good. And I, but I, people would take care of me and feed me and give me a place to sleep. And so I've never forgotten that. It's like, yeah, it's amazing that what this society does for artists. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, it's, it's super cool that you're also now, cause you're what, 10 years now in Portland or something like that. Yeah, home? exactly. 10 years. Yeah. And, um, so you're part of another community that also is at least from the outside, it seems like it's, um, supportive and, and, um, you know, congenial and, and people are looking out for each other. There's a lot of gigs. Yeah. It's a, a lot great of places city to play. That. Yeah. Well, um, I'm just glad to hang out with you a little bit and hear you play, and we're going to get back Thank to you. music. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Welcome back, John Craigie.